hey, how's it going? So something a little bit different, a longer form video based on the Clash Mini project that I posted last week. And if you stick around for the full video, I can guarantee you're gonna learn something that you didn't already know. For me, at least I learned something that I didn't know and it was something that wasn't clear within Figma at all. So let's go and take a look. Okay guys, so we're in Figma now. We're essentially gonna be starting with just a square and we're gonna capture the main silhouette for the icon. And if you can't notice the icon, if you take a good close look to that reference, you'll see dotted across the button and the backgrounds is a little trophy icon. So essentially all we're doing is just tweaking the uh, bottom radiuses on the rectangle or the square that we started with. Now we're gonna be working on the handles. I'm not bothered about the curves at this point. I'm just putting in the yeah, flat lines essentially. And then I'll use the uh, border radiuses or the corner radiuses to give it that nice, nice curve that we're looking for. It's a little bit fiddly at this point, trying to get the um, the strokes to line up perfectly. So what I end up doing is just um, outlining the stroke and then just duplicating it, flipping it on its axis. So we've got a mirror either side and then just squashing it all or flattening it all so it's just one shape. So at this point it's right click and outline stroke. And I'm gonna merge it all together by flattening it as you can sort of see what I was talking about, the it's really hard to line up the, uh, the nodes. So by outlining the strokes that we were working with, that's just gonna allow us to yeah, get right in there and make sure that all snaps into place. There we go, that's essentially the main silhouette of the icon, which makes up most of the style to be honest, or at least the more enjoyable bits. So we're just gonna put that to one side. And then we're going to focus on the button, which obviously starts with a rectangle, always starts with a rectangle. And then we're going to round the corners. Not too precious again about how exact the, uh, the rounded corners are, because it's just suggestive. Add a little drop shadow effect. This one, this effect's relatively hard, there's not much fall off. So yeah, we're not doing much blurring here. And then apply the color fill and then the inner glow or the inner shadow. And the inner glow is just gonna be that bit that sort of lifts the edges up a little bit. Yeah, I'm just playing about with the values a little bit. Adding the gradient. So take a look at this gradient as that hard cut that happens halfway or just over halfway, maybe two thirds of the button where they allow the other, the section for the, um, like the trophy stat that you've basically gained, I think. And um, the way I sort of see it is obviously it's just a visual thing, but like if the button was kind of like this shaped and the light was hitting from there, then you would get the shadow underneath and the highlight at the top. So it's just taking a look at it from that perspective, really. So it kind of makes it look like it's kind of got like a, you know, sort of a bit of an outward bevel. We don't really see it because it's um, straight on, but um, the light sort of suggests that, and that's something to think about. Obviously, really straightforward, and now we're on to the text. The text is just the. Uh, the classic um, outer stroke and the drop shadow. Just sampling the colors just to match it up. Try and eyeball it, you know, if you can try and match the colors that you see in the reference that you're referencing, then, you know, and, and you get that as close as possible, then that's just gonna help train your eye to sort of, you know, spot colors more accurately. So now we're going to be working on the icon again. 
Now we're going to try and capture that sort of casual uh, metallic look that we can see in the reference. Relatively straightforward, just a series of outer strokes and some gradients that sort of roll across the forms. Just picking the highlight and then the probably like the darkest point and then that gives you the uh, the gradient sort of roll off that you want. You could probably get away with using maybe a radial gradient if you wanted to capture the, the sort of the actual roll around a spherical object but in this case it's fine just with the linear one. Just added a, uh, an inner glow there actually and that just helps sort of give the the form a little bit of like a rim light you know so there's a light somewhere around here that's sort of just you know boosting the uh, the side of the object gives it a bit more a bit more form working on the handle gradient And then I realized that at this point I could probably just copy the properties. So if you right click and go to um, yeah, copy properties, you'll be able to see it and then you can just paste that onto any of the objects. So it's um, it saves you having to do the same gradient every single time and essentially helps us capture the, uh, the overall effect. They're just putting that in place now. So at this point, we're gonna create a component out of the icon and we're gonna turn this icon into a pattern. It wasn't immediately clear on how to do this, but the way to do it is to start off with a square to place the core icon within the middle and then offset things evenly either side so it would repeat and tile nicely. So as you can sort of see, I'm taking this trophy icon and I'm just snapping it to the points on where it snaps, which is actually quite useful, um, the whole snapping thing. So it's something to definitely utilize. So I'm quite happy with this pattern. And as you can sort of see, the points and where the icons spill over that gray box is the point in which uh, it will actually get masked. Um, so you need to ensure that that repeats correctly and I'm going to have a little trial now to sort of see just by um, duplicating it. But first I'll add the, um, the pattern to it and we can sort of see that we've got this little grid going on and I, th I would have thought that within this feature there would be a place to actually define patterns but there isn't. So I'm just... Uh, grouping stuff and playing about with uh, with settings and it was at this point I discovered that actually the rotations of components are not respected or like you know copied across so having a rotation on the source component doesn't have the same effect um, across the board if you've updated it later on so I took the uh, the icon components that I had and rotated them there. And I'm just testing the offset here. And as you can sort of see, when we've actually created the mask, it um, yeah creates a nice, nice pattern. So if it wasn't clear, what I did with that gray box was I created a, a copy of it and then masked all of those icons that I had set up in that pattern. So they all sit within that, that nice sort of window. And now I'm going to export it and I'll just save it to trophy texture. And then I'll re-import this. So you choose image, select what you need, 
And there it is, you've got your um, repeating pattern, which is set to tile. There are other options as well. So feel free to have a play. And by um, you know increasing the uh, bounding box there, that, that is what sets the, uh, the scale amount. Right now, just trying to find a, uh, a blending mode that behaves sort of relatively close. Probably just drop the uh, transparency a little bit on that as well. Or maybe the contrast. There we have it. That was the probably the trickiest bit about this actually, and it wasn't clear at all on how you could do that within Figma. So obviously take, take a look at the, uh, the video and slow it down a little bit if you want to, and try and uh, reproduce those steps. And also have a play because the minute you get into pattern making, that's when you yeah, start to get really creative and create all sorts of repeating patterns. At this point, I'm just creating another duplicate gradient. I noticed that the pattern falls off. So like I was explaining earlier, where the light hits the, the highest point or the brightest point, the, the other area falls into shadow. And as you can sort of see, there's no, um, yeah, there, there are no uh, icons in the bottom half of that gradient. So I'm just making that opaque. getting that cut off right. I'll increase that and I'll just set the blending mode slightly different. There we go. But that that is it essentially. Um, the next step is just to add the repeating uh, pattern to the background and yeah, just following the um, same steps of uh, applying patterns and choosing the one you created uh, will we'll get what you need. And obviously just, yeah, set it to tile and to scale it how you want. And then just mess about with the, uh, the levels and stuff like that to try and get it to sit a little bit back, but just be there. So there's enough information for those who are interested. And at this point, I kind of thought it felt a little bit congested. So I was just tweaking the pattern to sort of see what we could get. And yeah, just by removing some of the trophies and stuff like that, exporting to another version, and then obviously choosing a new image gets you a slightly different effect. And there you have it guys. So we made it to the end. And if you stuck around for this long, then I hope it was worth it for you. Please let me know within the comments below if it was worth it. Please give the video a massive thumbs up. Please subscribe, hit the bell icon. I'm not sure what it does, but hit it. Everyone else seems to talk about it. And until next time, guys, I'll see you soon and all the best.